What the hell was that? Batman and Harley Quinn. I have no idea what I just watched. It... It wasn't good. I'm having a hard time actually gathering my thoughts to form an opinion on this thing. It's not good. Uh, that I will say that. Absolutely. It's not good. But the way in which it's bad is really weird. It's not like, say, all the new 52-based DC animated movies that are bad because the characters are all grumpy and suck and the action is dull and boring and, and, and stuff like that. It's not... Th th those infuriate me because at this point they are bad in a very predictable way. This was bad, but... I would not have called the ways in this is bad, which made it oddly fascinating. And I'm not sure I'd go so far as to recommend it, but if you are somebody who tends to watch a lot of the DC animated stuff, not only would I not warn you off it, I would actively encourage you to watch it because this is madness. So um, I get there'll be spoilers, I guess, except the story is really kind of inconsequential and very easy to, to figure out. I mean, it plays out as far as plot goes. It's basically not any more complicated than a two parter out of the Batman animated series would have been. But God, where do I even start? Um, OK, the voice cast. Um, they got Kevin Conroy back. They got the, the guy who was Robin, who, knew, who later did Nightwing for the TV show. He's back. Um, their, their, um, Woodrow is good, their Ivy is good, their Harley is not bad. I don't know this actress. It's her first time voicing Harley so far as I could find, and she's not bad at it, but she's certainly, she doesn't hold a candle to the staples. She's no Arlene Sorkin, and Tara Strong, who basically more or less took the role over once Arlene Sorkin, um, kind of left it behind, is better than this woman was. So why they didn't just get Tara Strong in, I have no idea. And again, she's not bad, but I've heard much better Harleys in audio form. So when one of your title characters is one of the weaker voice aspects, that's not a good start. But then just the tone on this thing, I, I don't even know how to describe the tone on this thing because it has a light and fun feel like some episodes of the Batman animated series did in fact have. Yet at the same time, there's swearing and there's bloody deaths in a few cases. Like I was getting tonal whiplash right off the bat where after the opening, we see Woodrow, the Floronic Man, really bloodily murder this guard. And then they have this, this uh, title sequence that's basically like a road runner cartoon with with Harley playing you know the road runner and tricking everybody into hurting themselves and it's, I'm watching this title sequence going this does not feel like it belongs to the start of the movie we just got and that kind of <laughs> is all over the place because we this is a movie that ends on a joke and fails to properly resolve the story in the end has things like it pulls out of nowhere, middle of the movie, it decides to run with gags of the visible, you know, pow, sock, whatever, you know, riffing on the Adam West Batman, and one of them is, ow, my balls. And yet, at the same, this is also the same movie that has a scientist who is not a recurring character, and he's not an important guy in the DC universe, but he gets killed, and there's this long, lingering thing on him dying, and this dramatic music, and Harley's really torn up about it, and it seems to throw Nightwing off for the scene that follows. It's like, how is all of this part of the same movie? I mean, they, there are ways to, you know, find a balance, but, you know, with having light fun, but having poignant moments, but they don't blend. It's just from scene to scene, it's doing one thing, then it's doing another, and they don't gel, like, at all. And when it's going for comedy, sometimes it works. Some of the comedy works, some of the jokes work. Other times, especially if they're coming off a more dramatic moment or an attempt at a dramatic moment, it just, it falls 
flat. And then, okay, I can't not talk about the Harley and Nightwing thing because what the, what the hell, Bruce Tim? What the hell, okay? You didn't learn your lesson from going needlessly sexualized with Batgirl's additional scenes in The Killing Joke. You had to do it with Harley now, too. Granted, there's better precedent for Harley being over-sexualized, but again, tonal all over the place because we're getting, you know, light and goofy moments, and then she strips down to her underwear literally out of nowhere for no reason other than fan service, and she bends over looking in the closet and then decides she's gonna bonk... Night, wait, why? Why any of this? Because it, it, it's just so weird. Because, like I said, in some ways, the tone is reminiscent of some of the lighter episodes of the Batman animated series. And yet, at the same time, it throws in all the, all the most superficially mature things it can, i.e. swearing, sexual content, bloody violence, and it just comes off as way more childish and juvenile than that TV show ever did. And it's just, it's the thing's all over the map, and the... The scene at the bar, which had the one visual gag that I liked, which is that it's full, if you if you actually really know the Batman animated series really well, that bar where there's the dance scene and going on, it is loaded with actual background henchmen characters. Those twins, the big clown, those were the ones I recognized off the bat. I'm sure most of them were, were from the TV show. I thought that was cool and clever and it didn't draw a ton of attention itself and that was nice. Why did we have like two full song sequences in there? Harley's, I kind of maybe get, I mean, it served no plot function, but like, okay, give her a moment. Why were we focusing on the twins and their number? They should have been just in the background providing ambiance. Why did we basically stop everything dead to have this extended song sequence with them and then immediately follow it up with Harley's? It feels like filler. It feels like they were short on runtime and they decided to just do that. Okay, that'll eat up a few minutes, I suppose. And it's the things like trying to have world-ending stakes and yet keep spilling these jokes. And again, you can have high world-ending stakes and get jokes in there. Something like Kingsman did that very well. But even the first Kingsman movie, which was the one that did it better, knew that when you are barreling towards that climax, you need to have it more focused on the action and the stakes and let the humor kind of fall to the background until Kingsman did that one joke at the very end that I know ticked everybody off, but that's another subject. In any case, this thing just, even as it gets into the climax with world ending stakes just back forth back forth you know dramatic death and then you know, just goofy joke huh? and like the 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 whole thing harley and ivy it worked pretty well but why did harley like betray batman and nightwing for like a hot second was it just so she could have the line you know i did what you thought i would because it's thursday and like god and then there are some jokes that work. The, I think the one that, that landed the best for me, if I'm gonna like highlight a good, well-executed joke, is there is an extended chase scene where Harley, you know, Harley is, he's, she's riding in the Batmobile and she tells them, hey, stop, we gotta get that guy. And she goes, I have this extended chase scene, goes on maybe a little longer than it should. And I'm going here, why is this going on so long? She gets this guy and it turns out it was a guy who stood her up at a dance in high school and that's the only, that was her only interest in him. That was good. That was funny. You know why? Because that was a comedic moment informed by character, not weird tonal shifts in the whole overall thing. It was a moment that was funny because it spoke to Harley as a character. And just the, this thing is just bizarre. It is so weird and it doesn't work but I kind of recommend seeing it for just the, just, just, just so you can say you did. Cause even my ranting and rambling about this, I'm not sure I can do how bizarre and strange and just what this thing is, even in this rant. And I, I think in an odd way, you have to experience it for yourself. Just don't expect a, an actual good, movie so that's that's batman and harley quinn <sighs> um so 
Have you seen this thing? What were your thoughts on it? There's tons of stuff in here I didn't even talk about. Any other moments you want to highlight that left you sitting there going, what is going on? Whatever they are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, check me out on Twitter at Council of Geeks. Give a listen to the Council of Geeks podcast. That is available on iTunes and Stitcher. I'm also one half of the Punch Like a Girl podcast. That is a presentation of the Fire and Water Podcast Network at fireandwaterpodcast.com. As for me, I'll be back as soon as I can get my next fix.